Hello, everyone. Um, we're back here. We got Ashley on the line, and we have a very special guest. We have Oscar Gracie, everyone. That's the you SNL guys. intro. Yeah, I'm so good excited. SNL. I literally, oh, my gosh. The last time I talked, like, we were all together was when Folklore came out, and that feels, like, so long ago it literally feels like a century ago ago. it literally that doesn't feel long ago to me ashley's a mom now and this is also dawson's debut on the podcast because she's holding dawson right now and i'm so happy you're gonna hear little baby sounds yeah so he'll chime in about uh and just like that he has lots of thoughts he has lots of thoughts about it (laughs) unfortunately he has like um red hair so it could be a brady in the making (laughs) he's not brady he is red hair he's got red hair right now though all right well um we did recap the first two episodes oscar um you know when they first came out and now we're gonna kind of talk about the series as a whole i guess um we'll start with our over my overall thought it can be really condensed into like one statement and that is up until the last three episodes every week i watched and i was like oh god this is horrible oh my gosh this is so annoying oh why'd they do this and then um and yet and yet every week we were like oh it's thursday yeah. new <laughs> new and just like that episode so exciting lauren when are you coming over to watch yeah. uh and so why did i like hate it and yet get excited for it every week i obviously didn't hate it that much i, I did not hate it. i feel same exact way as ashley and you guys know because we talked about this i was like oh my god why did they why would they bring back characters that I love so much and make and give them such unlikable qualities? I think I felt personally right. offended by that. But then I remembered that people are human and these people have been through shit. And yeah, I couldn't agree more where I think I was like, oh, why did they make this series? But every Thursday, I couldn't wait to turn on the TV and see my old friends again in a part of a world mm-hmm. that I really, truly miss so much. And my qualms with it, which I'll recap if you didn't listen to the last episode or the last episode we did on this was I just felt like so much of the reason why we love Sex in the City was because Carrie, you know, Carrie was dating and all this stuff. And I was just like, can we get to this already? And I felt like we were seeing such little Mm -hmm. moments of Carrie. And the moments of Carrie, I felt like, weren't well thought out. Like, her not knowing how to turn on a dishwasher where the sound was coming from. Like, I was just like, what a waste of Carrie Bradshaw. Like, why did you bring me here for (laughs) this? So true. That that was such a weird thing, too. It was more. I'll wrap this up real quick so we can continue the conversation. But yeah, the last three episodes, I was like, I'm in and i i don't know what it was i guess it was when she yeah. showed up to the date with and we'll get into everything specifically but when she showed up to the date with the teacher and instead of letting him down over text she did it in person i'm like yes this is what a woman of her age and her experience would be doing this is what i want to see i want to see her dating i want to see her do all this stuff and her fashion and she just looks iconic and yeah that's kind of where i'm at right now i just want to give a quick update before we hear Everyone else's thoughts, yes. though, that they're officially, as of today, today's recording, we don't know yet if there is going to be a season two. And someone at HBO Max said, we're thrilled with how the show did. And showrunner Michael Patrick King and Sarah Jessica Parker are talking to make sure that there's a creative direction that they're excited by. They will come to us when they're ready, but I hope they have something they're excited by. I know that they had the idea of Big's death as a way to examine this kind of time in your life in your 50s. I think they wanted to see how it went and how that felt. It turns out they had a good time, so I imagine they're going to come up with something they're excited by, but we're just giving them time. So we don't know yet if we're going to get more. But I want to hear Lauren and Oscar's thoughts. I want to hear Oscar's because he actually binged all of it yeah so he wasn't waiting week to week like us and i wonder if the experience was different w- watching it back to back to back that's yeah. such a good point you see i feel like oh and also like a little history of your sex and city love because no one oh, knows yeah. if you like sex and city or not we're just making you watch it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so i was late to sex and the city i remember i um 
I bought all the DVDs in high school because I, I I watched the Sex and the City movie, the first one. I was like, let me watch a show. And you could not stop me from collecting DVDs back in the day. Like I was like <laughs> all about it. So I remember buying all like the box sets of all the seasons. I would like binge it on DVD and I loved it. And I was like really sheltered as a kid. So I remember being like really shook. At it. I was like, good. I was 17. And- so like well enough to know what is going on in the world. But I was still like, oh my God, there's like men's butts on TV. And I was yeah. like, oh, what a program. And that was the DVDs, not like the E uh, um, airing yeah, yeah, of it. So yeah. you saw all 40 Uncensored. minutes and you saw a lot of weirds. Yeah. Um, so- <laughs> it was, what a program. So it really won me over. But I feel like I've been really fatigued almost by reboots. And I feel like I've been scorned by like Gospel Girl, especially. Um, and that one I did watch week to week. So this one, okay. for and just like that, I was like hesitant. I really was going to skip it all together because I seen like the news and stuff come in about it. And I kind of felt like I knew what was happening without watching it. Um, but I did watch it over the past week. And, you know, at first I was like very cringe. And I think it took me a minute to like adjust to, like how they were um, tackling the show and how like the women are in like this day and age. At first I was like, did they, were they trapped in like an iceberg or something? All of a sudden, like they were just like transported to like 2022. It was like so it was so odd how they were handling all like the woke culture. Mm-hmm. But then, like you guys said, like by the end, I feel like I adjusted to it and Carrie was starting to get like back into dating. Um, and all, and then <laughs> I really loved all the things with, like Charlotte's kids too. So by the end, it, like it did win me over. And I'm sure it's when I get a season two because it's like HBO's best performing show. Um, and I, I feel like they love to like really draw out like the renewal, make people like really thirsty for it make us all beg yeah. for it and be like mm-hmm. well you begged for it here it is you know mm-hmm. true mm-hmm. lauren what'd you think um uh i mean i agree with everything everyone's saying i think that it was like really exciting to watch the last like four episodes i feel like what really drew me in was when they were all painting that like um i don't know what it was apartment building together in Brooklyn or something and Steve was there and he was like expressing himself the way he used to to Carrie and then the ring and everything that was like so old school sex and city and there wasn't like any of that like do 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 music going on the background (laughs) it was just like silence which was really nice so from there on out I was like really excited and now I really want a season two because I want them to kind of show us that Miranda isn't as happy without Steve as she thinks she's going to be. You guys, I woke up in the middle of the night last night and like my thought, like I I was basically waiting for Dawson to wake up and I was and like he like made some coo sound or something. Aww. And of course, like what do I think of? Are Miranda and Steve really over? Is that really how their relationship is going to end? Like with, you know, we see Brady like packing up, like like going to college, right? Oh, that yeah. She has red hair again. Yeah. And it's just like seems like, oh, yeah, your father and I just aren't together anymore. Uh, I'm going to go to L.A. Like, really? This is how their relationship, like are, if they get a season two, is Steve not even going to be in it? it Is it going to disintegrate that quickly? Come on now. I'm like, I was actually like, I had a delayed shock in this. Mm. We all know we are what we eat. We also know that it's hard to plan and prep each meal each week. Splendid Spoon, though, is delicious. It is a plant-based, gluten-free, ready-made meal that's delivered right to your door. It saves you a trip to the grocery store as well as having to buy, you know, ingredients that, you know, you make one dish with. And then you're like, oh, when's the next time I'm actually going to use this? And it can really add up, especially if you're adding spices to things. Spices are expensive. Splendid Spoon offers four starting plans. Their most popular is the signature plan that includes breakfast, lunch, and a signature reset product, which is a perf- which is perfect when we get off track on our wellness journey and we overindulge on high-calorie, nutrient-depleted foods. The rest... The reset soups are low in calories yet contain vitamins and minerals and are easy on your tummy. And, and Lauren and I always find that like sometimes that, like healthy foods aren't easy on your tummy. Yeah, but this really has. Been. They're hard to digest, but Splendid Spoon is not. Splendid Spoon gets it and they know healthy food can get a bad rap, but these meals are actually very delicious. They're meek 
not. They're vegan. <laughs> they're vegan meatballs and marinara are the best. Oh, they're so good. So again, it is plant based eating, um, and it can like help you create a habit out of e- out of eating plant based. And with that, you're going to feel more energy, weight loss, improved sleep, better skin. Um, love the chocolate cherry smoothie because chocolate cherry is like my favorite combination. Um, and like Lauren mentioned earlier, the vegan meatballs and marinara so so good so you can get started today and save 35 dollars on your first order of delicious plant-based meals at splendidspoon.com slash get it 35 that's splendidspoon.com slash get it 35 to save 35 dollars on your first order that's only six dollars and 66 cents per meal thank you splendid spoon for sponsoring this podcast i have a lot I, can we just take like time to talk about Miranda specifically? Because I feel like this yes. is a point of controversy for a lot of people. There's a mm-hmm. lot of Sex and the City fans that are like, what the hell? Miranda would never have done this. She wouldn't uproot her life like this. She's so level-headed. And then there's another camp of people, which I think I was in the first one in the beginning, but now I've come around to be in the second camp where I'm like, I I think Miranda's always been kind of messy. She's always been like, I don't you know, like she's always sort of, I don't know how to describe it. I think she's always been very judgy of Carrie's decisions. Yeah. And yes, and, yes, and yes. I, I and like Charlotte, seeing yeah. that now she is in a position where like, what did she say in the last episode? Or I don't know if it was the last episode or the second to last episode where her and Carrie are in the bathroom together. Yeah, and she's that's like, what I was thinking. Oh, yeah, and they were fighting, which, oh, my God, wait, Rabbi Jen, is that the name? Rabbi Jen needs, like, a spinoff series. I thought that character <laughs> she, it was very I That her. character was incredible. <laughs> but when they're fighting in the bathroom, I love when Miranda's like, can I just not follow the rules? Like, can yeah. I just do something for love? And I thought mm-hmm. that that was so poignant and so so um smart that they had her say that because she was always Mm -hmm. the person that's like follow the rules you know like if that's a bad guy don't go for it don't call big but then she would come around with carrie so to see her sort of believe in love and go on this like fantasy on her own to la like i think we all know it's gonna i think we all know it's headed towards like a, a crash almost yeah, but um, it's so interesting to me. I it's, think that's the most interesting part of the show. Honestly, is Miranda's mm. storyline. Yeah, yeah. I I think the her saying, "Can I just do anything for love?" and like, "I'm just gonna go to L.A." is kind of like in the last episode of like the original Sex City when she told Big to just go to Paris and like doing that big jump. Yeah, and I guess now it's her turn. And I kind of agree with like I want to keep Miranda the way she was, but then I also do agree with kind of what they're doing is like anyone's allowed to change and anyone can you know, do anything they want for love. Okay, but I think, like, going back to my comment, everything just seemed to happen really fast in this whole series. Yeah. It felt like 10 episodes, they really tried to cram in their storylines. I think the entire time we were like, okay, where's this going? Where's this going? Where's this going? And then it, like, wrapped up way too quickly. I I wish that they had either made this season 15 episodes or something, or at least told us going into it was green multi seasonal because but that's gonna make you wait around for it more you yeah know? but it would have made more sense as to why like things just felt like they concluded too fast yeah well the writers yeah, they, they have didn't... the writers have a podcast which i haven't listened to yet which i should be listening to but i think because from other things that people have told me on my Instagram and have alluded to that listen to it, it sounds like the first six episodes were really just meant to set up a lot. So yeah. it, it kind of makes sense that we all like the last four more, I think. Mm. But I think you're right, Ashley. I think if we knew... It, a part of me was like, they they knew what was going to happen to Carrie. Like, Big was going to die. But then they didn't have anything else for her to do the rest of the season. And then Miranda has this huge arc. Miranda's the most fully developed character. She, like, almost took over Carrie and has this whole life change. And then Charlotte's just become background, like a decorative pillow in a way. Where, (laughs) oh, that's not true. That's not true. Charlotte goes through a lot, too, with, with Rock. So... But see, even I forgot that because Miranda's I think it's story- definitely a side storyline. Uh, I want to let Oscar talk. The Carrie thing is 
that what that what that's what's so weird is like we're like oh she he died so that we could see Carrie date in the modern age, but we we got that only in the last two episodes, which was bizarre. Yeah, I thought the grieving mm-hmm. arc was going to be a lot shorter than it was. At first, I mm-hmm. liked it because I'm like, okay, it it like really changes. It makes the stakes like right off the bat. Like, okay, there. I feel like when a reboot is like brave enough to kill off a main character at the beginning it like really lets you know that okay like things are going to change for these characters and they're going to go through it so i was excited about that and then the grieving just like was really slow and i get that it's like a human thing but for a show Mm -hmm. especially carrie to spend like 80 percent of the season just like grieving and being sad and like everything came back to her being sad and grieving (laughs) like every plot point that she was going through it just came back to like well, my husband just died. Every like every True, conversation. Yes, 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 yeah. yes. I mean, I this is so classic me. Carrie Bradshaw. Honestly, when you go back, she kind of brings it all back to herself. Mm-hmm. And I I know it's the worst thing that ever happened. Her husband died, and it's really sad. But if someone else is going through something like like Miranda leaving Steve, she'll be like, "Well, my husband died," and it's like, can you just let your friends have something? Yeah. It's, that is so classic. But that is so Carrie. Carrie. I like that. That was yeah. Carrie. I know, but I just I would punch her if she was my <laughs> yeah. friend. And yeah, I was going through a divorce and becoming a lesbian, and you're like, my husband died, and I'm like, okay, well, also let's move on. Oscar's dying. <laughs> I I totally understand. Uh, yeah, I I never yeah. saw that that um quality of carries until i rewatched the series in quarantine quarantine right and i went through the whole 100 episodes like within two weeks and i was like oh my gosh carrie really does bring it all back to her yeah, yeah. she is that she friend. really does but <laughs> yeah like charlotte's like my daughter it wants to be a, uh, a boy and then she's like well weird i need fries for this <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's so, so true classic carrie moments and yeah. but I agree with you guys with the grief. I mean, a part of me is like, it's good that they spent that much time grieving. Carrie's a human. We relate to her because of that. But also a part of me is like, could this, could your first six episodes have been a movie? Should you have come out with a movie first Mm. on HBO Max where Big passes away, Miranda starts to have inklings, Rock starts to have inklings, and then let the show thrive, you know? Like, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, and then just like two years later, she goes out with the teacher and throws up on her shoes, which was a, an amazing moment as well. Um, I hated that moment. <laughs> oh, really? I love I was that. like, Why did no, you hate that moment? Because I thought it was so unrealistic. I'm like, people don't go on a first date and get so wasted that they're throwing up outside like they're in like senior year of college but it was because they were both widowed and it was that uncomfortable but did you guys think that was believable i i didn't think it was absolutely unbelievable i don't know oscar what'd you think i really didn't like that part but maybe that's because i date all the time and or i don't i haven't dated a lot a lot but i'm just like i don't know do people do that i feel i don't know Um, that part didn't bug me either i thought I was kind of like in the middle about it. Like I thought it was kind of like a crazy thing, but this whole show has so many crazy things going on that I was just like, <laughs> it's just another night. It's That's just, true. It's That's just true. another true. night in and just like that. Um, in conjunction with therapy, medication, and um, deep breathing, um, I've been lighting up some CBD uh, with dad grass just to feel chilled out at the end of the night. I don't usually... Um, feel great after a drink or anything especially if i have to work early the next day so i like to have a little cbd you light it up you feel calm you kind of feel like you had maybe like half a glass of wine but without the side effects it's 100 percent organic pre-rolled joints and it's very low in thc and very high in cbd so you can enjoy the effects of cbd while keeping your head super clear yeah, and if uh, you're like Lauren, <laughs> you have been too damn high at some point. <laughs> um, today's weed can be tricky, but Dad Grass makes it easy. They're reviving the pleasure of that casual smoke with 100% organic hemp, so you can chill out without the stress. All Dad Grass products are federally legal for ages 18 and over, and it ships right to your door anywhere in the U.S. And if you're traveling, no need to worry; you can actually take it wherever you go. It's TSA approved so right now dadgrass is offering 
our listeners 20% off your first order when you go to dadgrass.com slash get it. That is dadgrass.com slash get it for 20% off your first order. Dadgrass.com slash get it. Okay, let's go. Okay, so any other thoughts about Miranda uh, before we move on to another character? Because I feel like there's more to say here. And I about Steve. Wanted, I will say, like, I, wanted, I like when she was saying, it was kind of like same conversation in the bathroom, which I think will like affect season two if it happens, was like, um, I'm allowed to like change and then change back. So she's like, she already mm-hmm. kind of set up the oh, idea yeah. of, yeah, mm-hmm. that she, the foundation is there for like to have this whole crazy arc, but then like change back into the version of herself, the character that everyone already loves. So I feel like they kind of have the door, like, ajar for her to, uh, to change back. N- maybe her hair color was the first yeah. step of changing back. Yeah. Mm. Well, my... I love looking for little things like that in such little stupid Easter. shows like this. <laughs> like, I'm reading the Bible, you know? Yeah. It's like, no, it's Sex in the City. It is our Bible. What would be interesting, though, is if and when Miranda does come back right let's say she does come back she's she can't be the same miranda that we knew so basically old Mm -hmm. miranda's dead because she can't she's not going to judge all her friends now now having uprooted her life and lived through that right so i wonder how she's gonna be now maybe her and carrie are like double dating which could be interesting Mm -hmm. i don't know that'd be fun because they've never been like single together have they? well they have obviously but I don't know. I feel like so much of what but I remember rarely. of them is Miranda being with Steve while Carrie was like in and out with Big. Yeah. 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 Um, I wanted to get Oscar's thoughts on the podcast. On Okay. Because <laughs> uh, I think we've cut, obviously everyone thought it was the cringiest, but I want your, you know, eloquent words. Yeah, it was. <laughs> it was quite a cringe fest. And I feel like there's still every like aspect where they're trying to like apply like uh, diversity was just so like unnatural and forced. And I feel like that was like, that was probably the biggest offense of it just being very unnatural. Uh, with- okay. Wait, Miranda's professor. That made sense. Bringing in um, yeah. a person there. Now the, the Charlotte friend, that felt really forced because in the end, it wasn't like she became part of their crew or anything yeah. like that. And it was like, well, also most of the characters, like they had like very, very small like stories that didn't involve um, the core three, which um, so that and that too, like they didn't really feel like very fleshed out for they kind of mm-hmm. just felt like they were there to kind of like diversify things be like look yeah. mm-hmm. we're making like we're woke we're make, we're making a <laughs> show for the this new generation but it was just like so forced i want to say one thing though okay wait i think that they did a good job with the realtor she felt like natural yeah kid. but that that was like a situation where i feel like that was a very like normal situation for her. like it was a realistic situation you know like she yeah. Uh, apartment hunting and you have uh, a realtor who's like a woman of color versus like the with like with the professor I feel like really has Miranda as a lawyer never encountered any like a woman with like braids yeah, like, like oh, true it's like yeah. all, of, all of a sudden she was like wow like she was shook to like interact with like a black woman but it's like really as like a liberal lawyer who is like what, yeah. 55 yeah. you've never interacted with like black that's people. true it's like she just jumped into 2020 yeah. yeah and was not living before that time that's what yeah. i that felt odd to me too but i actually really i loved miranda and her professor's relationship and i loved the professor's storyline i thought I like too. that yeah. character was first of all i love that care sorry they're mowing the lawn outside my house i don't know if you guys can you guys hear that Mm -hmm. okay anyways um i loved so much that her oh i was saying she's amazing in the morning show if you guys watch morning show that the actress i gotta get her name oh my god that's where from. she's incredible i she's like one of my new favorite people to watch i'll look up her name now but anyways she i thought that was really interesting how they told that story of like wanting to have a baby, not yeah. wanting to have a baby, tying your worth to whether or not you're a mom, um, not being on the same page, but being so in love with your partner. Like that was so layered and done well and made sense. Good and job, was Naz. thank you for, for putting words to what I meant. She had a point. Um, that's why I think that the the one the one from school, Charlotte's friend, 
felt like there was no point to her. There was no payoff like, to her. Yeah. yeah uh -uh. Maybe not yet, but maybe it's coming. Are you tired of sex podcasts that only focus on how to please your man? Then Sydney in the Sheets is the podcast for you. In each episode, Sydney Page and her friends talk about incredible ways to help you transform your life in and out of the bedroom. There are a lot of other sex podcasts out there that can be intimidating. And Sydney in the Sheets... I don't know why it's so hard for me to say, but Sydney in the Sheets feels more like a real conversation you'd have with your girlfriends. Not enough people talk about how to make sex a better experience for women. And Sydney in the Sheets is a sex positive podcast made for women, made by women for women. Sydney and her friends will talk about losing their virginity, body counts, purity culture, sex positions, lube, and everything in between. They'll talk about the good, the bad, the uncomfortable, and the embarrassing parts of sex and relationships because they don't think anyone should be having bad sex. I like Sydney in the Sheets because I think it's fun to listen to like embarrassing losing your virginity stories i wish i could listen to that all day um that's why we've done episodes on it exactly so i just kind of love the embarrassing things that they're very open and honest about so I'm, I'm here for that so to listen to sitting in the sheets follow the show on apple podcasts amazon music spotify or wherever you listen to podcasts you can also listen ad free by subscribing to wondery plus in apple podcasts or the wondery app Okay, so I just looked her up, and Dr. Nia Wallace is played by Karen Pittman, who yeah. I am just obsessed with. Obsessed. Um, yeah, she. I loved that. Um, I think was it in the same episode when they kind of acknowledge her not being able to get pregnant, and then also Charlotte dealing with her potential menopause and her daughter's peer, first peer at the same time it Best was like episode. very like full circle yeah and i feel like a lot of um the fans and stuff were like almost going through menopause at this point potentially and i feel like that was uh, very hilarious to see or having kids or having kids or yeah right. or their kids are getting their periods yeah. Yeah. It, it's so monumental yeah, and can we just say the most relatable, I mean, it, 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 maybe it's weird that of all of this, the most relatable moment in the whole show was Lily having a hard time inserting a tampon. It was, <laughs> that, don't you understand? It was unbelievable. We've all been there. Unbelievable. <laughs> It was it was so good because you guys it took me days to like get comfortable with them and it took Lily days it was yeah, great yeah I had to have so a friend funny. like help me but it was funny seeing like but didn't you think she no I guess it is I guess that is how it is when you're like trying to she was so annoyed with her mom. Well, My, I love I, I love think, how that whole thing started too with her. Yeah. Like she was so excited for the the what was it the pool party, mm -hmm. uh, and to, like wear oh, bikini. Yeah. That's how she was. She was so upset, and like her scream, um, how that whole scene happened. I was like, okay, <laughs> this is. I was really back in it. <laughs> like that. Yeah. Whole, I really <laughs> yeah. Lily and Rock. I I really do love Lily and Rock. I think they're so right great. when you heard her scream, you knew she got her period. Yeah, yeah totally. <laughs> yeah, and it it was so weird because during my second period, I was going into sixth grade. It was summertime. And I remember walking into my mom's bathroom and, be, and having a pool party to go to that day and being like, mom, I think I have to, I think I have to use a tampon. And then I couldn't, yeah. I was way too scared. And we had to cancel on the pool party last minute. You just wore jeans the entire time, maybe. No, Jean shorts, people I mean. make fun of you. Pool parties are honestly traumatic. It's why the movie they eighth are. grade by Bo Burnham was so oh, iconic because it was so like, good. because we all know the trauma of being invited to a pool party at that age. Oh, so sad. It's the craziest. Um, okay. You didn't know what to do with your pubic hair because it was coming out. Of oh, your all right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's so true, Ashley. That's so true. I forgot about that. When that's on season two, you know, you know where it came from. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. yeah, it's gonna be. I also loved. Sure. I I agree with you, Oscar. I loved how Lily had a secret Instagram that her she was hiding star. from her mom. Yeah. yeah, that was very. I don't like. Imagine having Charlotte as your mom. I think. I think Charlotte was pretty written true to like how Charlotte would be at her age now. 100%. Mm -hmm. 100%. The only thing um, I didn't like about Charlotte's care, or not that I didn't like, that I didn't feel or believe was when she was playing tennis with Harry and she got mad at him for not letting her win so and weird. mansplaining her. That was so I was so like, forced. is this 
I don't know. For some reason, it, it just it mm-hmm. felt off to me, and I felt like it was it was a scene used just so she could talk about mansplaining. But again, mm. exactly that. It was exactly a scene used to just use the word mansplain. It mm. also show that even Charlotte and Harry have arguments. Not all couples are perfect because that was the only time we've ever seen them have a conflict. Oh, that's yeah. true. So I guess that's a good purpose. But again, I was like three, couples four like minutes better. about tennis. Like, I don't, I don't yeah. know. Like, come on. Why did you bring us here? Like it was a snooze yeah. fest. Yeah. Okay. Let's talk about the elephant in the room. Che Diaz. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> che, I just uh, want to give... you go first. Yeah. yeah Oscar, you go. go first. Um, I think they are a fun character, but <laughs> good job. <there. laughs> See, they're a good, they're a fun character, but I feel like their only personality trait was like being, um, like bisexual, non-binary. It was like every converse, every time they're on the screen or every time they had any dialogue, it all came back to like, this is when I came out. There was all like jokes about like coming out and like being, uh, queer and uh pronouns and it was just like there was nothing really about their personality like beyond that that i learned throughout the whole 10 episodes and they had a lot of screen time um and interacted with so many characters but literally every conversation came back to like their identity um and i feel like there's just all like the every comedy routine just like every bit that they had all came back to that put comedy routine in quotations (laughs) because it was also a comedy concert comedy concert whatever that means um so so cringy i want to piggyback off what you said oscar because first of all shout out to sarah ramirez because i do think sarah did the best that they could yeah. with this character and like given I, given yeah. what they were given on paper like executed you know what i mean like yeah. i believed in i believe shay diaz was a person but i agree with what you're saying and i think i feel that way when i see latinx characters on screen where it's hard right because you want to feel represented when you're at home and you want to feel seen but also i know that that's just a, a part of me and not all of me and it's not my identity and so it's I agree. I think it was it was a lot. But I do think that the character really did build up a lot of momentum in the show that made a lot of things happen. Like, it, the character was necessary is what I'm trying to say. Mm-hmm. We are really excited about this ad because uh, we're tired of sleeping on cotton. Cotton can be boring. Cotton is actually incredibly wasteful. You never know that. Uh, I didn't know that. I mean, um, thirsty. It's a damaging crop that uses dangerous pesticides and drains in the earth's water supply. These are things that I'm really just learning. And it's time to move on to something cleaner, softer, and better for the environment that doesn't have to cost a fortune. And we want to introduce you to Attitude Bamboo Sheets because bamboo is better in bed. You guys, I have um, recently discovered bamboo sweats. I got a bamboo sweatshirt and sweatpants, and they are the comfiest pair. And now I have bamboo sheets with Attitude. They are they're like they put cotton to shame this stuff is so much comfier so much softer it's actually softer than silk and it's sustainable as hemp and it uses 500 times less water than cotton sheets they are luxuriously silky and get even softer with every wash. Uh, just ask the 15,000 customers who gave these sheets five stars. Uh, if you're a hot sleeper, these are for you. They're breathable, moisture wicking, and hypoallergenic. And they keep you comfortable all night long. Clean bamboo is responsibly sourced and made in a closed loop system that recycles 98% of water in the process. Plus, all of Etitude's products are climate neutral certified. I am one of those hot sleepers. Like, I get so sweaty in bed, especially with all these hormones raging through my body and, like, flexing. Fluxing. They're always in flux is what I mean. But attitude has really been very breathable, so comfy. I wake up less drenched. Uh, Try any attitude bedding with their 30-night sleep trial. And if you're not completely satisfied, return it for a full refund. Right now, you can get... 20% 20% off your order plus free shipping when you visit 
attitude.com slash get it. That is spelled E T T I T U D E dot com slash get it. This is Attitude's best offer, but don't wait. It's only for a limited time. Order today for free shipping and 20% off your order at attitude.com slash get it. Seriously, guys, these are so comfortable. Everyone should be sleeping on them. I mean, when it comes to investing in something, I think like investing in your bed and what you sleep on is one of those things that like you do it every single night. You wear it every night, basically. So do it right. The first couple episodes, it was like they're obnoxious. Uh, they're not funny. And then as time went on, you did appreciate the colorfulness that the character brought and did do you agree with me i mean i hated i hated shay less um as time went on because i saw less of like the comedy routine as we wanted (laughs) and when when um the scene i really liked was when miranda showed up spontaneously spontaneously (laughs) spontaneously and um brought cookies and i was like this is so cringy cringy, and this is so true and they brought cookies where to 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 chase apartment apartment. yeah remember and then and then she was like I just popped by because I was thinking about yeah, you. Yeah. And then she was like, oh, what am I doing? I wouldn't do this with a guy. Why am I doing with you? And that is so true. It's like she would have never done this with a guy. That's very true. I loved mm-hmm. it. And I just felt secondhand embarrassment. And I've also like, you know, hey, I have food for you. And it's like so cringy. I don't give a fuck about your food. That's well, what I, I mean, Lauren, it. about momentum real quick, is that every yeah. moment that Shay was on screen, is it Shay or Che? Am I saying it right? Shay. Shay? I think it's whatever. I don't, re- I don't recall either way. Every moment <laughs> the character was on screen, I was like, something's going to go down. Something interesting is going to happen. Well, that was like the time that Miranda went to the show in Central Park and Che called her out for being married. I really liked that part. Yeah. Because we didn't you know. thought you thought that like she would have been maybe a little bit more uh Lucy Goosey there. Yeah, like, or- oh yeah, everyone's married and have sex with me, so it's fine. But I like that um they had standards. She, yeah. Um the California girls song. <laughs> that really that really did a number on me. I was like, this is this is really <laughs> <laughs> this is really going down. I was like, okay, okay. It was so, so unexpected, yeah. but I can I just say that that I think I thought was well executed because to have this song playing, Miranda interacting with family members she can't can talk to because she doesn't speak the same language, and her mm-hmm. her just having this face of dread, I, it was also like ah, you know. Oh, I, I had I had no idea what was coming. I had no idea same, what, yeah. what they were going to announce. And it was anticlimactic. I saw something on TikTok today of these two podcasters slash actual comedians being like, I am so jealous of Shay because successful podcaster, tons of comedy concerts and their own pilot <laughs> and they're not funny. And I'm like, it's so, oh true. so true. So true. Yeah. So funny. Um, okay. Let's talk. Since we're on the topic of podcasts, I actually loved how we got to see a little more of the other podcasters. Like and I really oh, enjoyed yeah. that character and Carrie's relationship. I thought that that was really cute. Um, Why can't I remember his name? I don't know. I can't remember anyone. Jackie. Name right now. <laughs> yes, yes. I think it was Jackie. Yeah. Um, and I I love their surprise wedding, and I love that now Carrie's going to have her own podcast. And a lot of people knew that they were teasing the podcast guy, you know, at the network, basically like. Mm-hmm. eventually gonna be her producer yeah her yeah, producer he is cute a lot of people like kind of called that out but i was oh i didn't notice that at i all. didn't notice it at all and so what are you what is everyone thought what's everyone thought did on you notice Franklin? oscar because you, yeah. you watched out the series i remember was there was like one episode where like um they specifically like asked him about like if there's any calls for carrie or whatever and he was like he was like he was like giddy and like really giggling at everything that Carrie was saying. It was like the I was early on like oh. after she snapped like after they're like Carrie you gotta like you know pick it up and then she came back and she was just like really firing them and he had like a comment to 
to Carrie about like how great she was doing with like the calls or whatever. And I kind of figured then mostly because they work together and he's attractive. So I feel like that's really, <laughs> oh, God. That's really like our standards in American television are like so <laughs> obvious. I like, has Carrie ever been with, with a guy that wasn't white? No. Cause I'm really stoked for this. This guy's got swag. I, what what is he? What is he? What do you well, think? The Latin. actor I think is Latin. Yeah, oh, okay. X, I think I don't want to. I mean, I he's just beautiful. Yeah. His hair is Super just hair. so. Hot. It was also great when I felt so seen when Carrie was asked to be kissed on a date, and she was just like, "Ugh!" She just felt so deflated, you know, where she's just like, "Uh, oh, am I ever going to have romance again? Is romance dead?" And it's so true. It's like you just want it to happen and you just want it to like fit. And so mm-hmm. when the elevator closed on them, I was like, yes, I love this yeah, so much. I good. felt so gratified. And the thing is as attached to big as we all were or whatever we want to use tense wise, we, I think collectively we're like down for this new guy. Like we're, we all feel good about him. We don't resent him or like think, oh, oh, there's a new guy. I think it's exciting for all I of us. I feel like I would be fine with her kissing anyone. Honestly, I don't know why though. Like Big has been so forgotten in this series. I know they cut out a lot of flashbacks and I think that they left some flashbacks in. We would feel a little more like, oh, maybe not yet because we were reminded, but they yeah. really just kind of cut him out besides a couple i was gonna here say there, is so. it the real life drama over chris noth that made us be able to let go of big faster because i think not per- for me personally honestly but like but the, maybe because of the editing that they did the because editing, of it yeah. well i was gonna say back to what oscar was saying earlier how we were all we were all in agreement that the grieving was so long. And now after hearing what everyone's saying, it was so necessary. Big had to be so far away ago, I think, for us to embrace Franklin or yeah. anyone new coming into her life, I think. And also I saw a meme on Instagram that was so funny. And it was a scene of Carrie and Big back in the day. And she had the Eiffel Tower purse. And someone's like, yeah. if Big only knew that he, he would be in that bag one day. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. It was so morbid. So true. It was so morbid. <laughs> oh, that is so funny. Oh, oh, that's so funny. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Relationships take work, especially the most important one you can have in your life, your relationship with yourself. And a lot of us will drop anything to go help someone we care about. We'll go out of our way to treat other people well. But how often do we give ourselves the same treatment? So this month, BetterHelp Online Therapy wants to remind you that you matter just as much as everyone else does. And therapy is a great way to make sure you show up for yourself. Lauren recently has... You guys probably know, um, if you listen to this podcast regularly, has been talking to her better help therapist a lot. Um, because we, you know, we did a podcast recently about panic attacks and anxiety attacks, and Lauren has been getting panic attacks. So she's been talking to her better help therapist like twice a week. I would also like to report that the panic attacks are down. I don't want to jinx anything, but they're they're down. They're much less often. That's great. Um, but it's so affordable that Lauren's able to talk to her very frequently. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's it's much more affordable than in person therapy. This is all like digital. You can basically um, do a live chat session you know just like texting or like typing stuff to a therapist um you could do video or phone you don't have to be on camera if you don't want to you know you can hide the screen um and you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours so give it a try see why over 2 million people have used better help online therapy again this podcast is sponsored by better help and the i don't get it podcast listeners will get 10 percent off their first month at betterhelp.com slash Get it. That is B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash get it. What do we guys think about Carrie's fashion this season, I suppose? Well, I have to call something out. There's a dress that she wore on the steps of like, I think it was somewhere in Central Park. You guys, I had that dress. I got it at the trading post. You told me when I was cleaning out my closet when we were moving out of L.A., 
to donate it. What was it? Which dress? What are you talking about? I can about? easily pull, pull it up. It's been shown all over the place. Pull it, it was up. a sundress. When the fuck did Carrie wear a sundress? And I told you to get rid of it. <laughs> you both were like, dump. Uh-oh. <laughs> Whatever. Let me she accessorize it really well. Um, yeah, I, I think she did a great job. She looked incredible. And zero complaints about the way she looked. I love that she turned down the plastic surgery, honestly. Even though, like, yeah, me, when facelift. I am that age, I will be getting the surgery. <laughs> but since she has, like, so many good, like, tales and, like, memories with her face and her husband that I would also keep it, like, literally out of nostalgia. I'd keep my old face out of nostalgia. I, You know why I love that you brought that up? Because it reminded me that Jonathan Groff is in this. And I, I was like, <laughs> yeah. fuck yes. I love Jonathan Groff is a goddamn sex icon. And it made me think, why are we seeing more familiar faces in this series? Like, there are some really great actors out there that could pop into this world that would really jump off the page even if it's a one scene thing like jonathan groff and i i actually yeah, would lo- i think it would make me love the show more as long as they were done properly and shortly because i don't yeah. want to think of like another actor infusing into this world this new york world we've already created in our head like because that would just be like wait no you're not you're not in this world that doesn't make any sense yeah that's true um, but jonathan groff was perfect he was perfect, perfect and also a it. moment for the valentino gown that carrie wears yeah. in paris like that was her her entire outfit her glam everything was just so iconic so effortless even mm-hmm. her outfit to not get cigarette smoke in her hair that we all thought was a quarantine <laughs> outfit when it came out before the show came out i was like i yeah. want to wear this now like it's, carrie just and has this is the sundress. she's so magnetic that you just want to wear everything she has on i can't see ashley yeah it's very difficult you can't can you text it to us it was a variation of that dress no it's the (laughs) dress lauren (laughs) okay well she put whatever whatever. it's fine it's fine uh she yeah she looks great i i i want to jump to another topic if you guys don't mind yeah that's fine i have another topic too i wonder if it's the same one there's so many so in the the future uh setting up for a season two how could they possibly get away with not having samantha have a role after they did the texting thing throughout the entire season leading up to them actually getting a drink while she was in europe Oh my god! I forgot That's, that that it, happens in the finale. Oh, are yeah. they gonna then come back and say, "Oh, I met"? Obviously, I'm, they're not gonna pick up right where they left off. I feel like I'm gonna be mad if we come back and Miranda's already back from LA and Carrie's already back from Paris because I want to like watch those things play out. I feel like that's exactly what's gonna happen because I don't see like a way around it. You know, right. <laughs> you know what I no, mean? No, hundred percent. Yeah. Because um, especially because I mean, I watched that that episode after already knowing um that sarah jessica parker had like firmly stated after the episode came out no kim control is not coming back even after that episode so i was yeah. like i was watching uh that scene with that knowledge and i was like how the how are they gonna do hell, this hell. so i think like a time jump is really like the only the only way they can dodge it she's just gonna be like um samantha sends her love she is so busy but doing well Period. Yeah. I, yeah. I was just very irritated as a fan that that happened in the finale to give us this glimmer of hope that maybe we'll mm-hmm. see Samantha in an episode. And then a couple days later, literally the next day, it was like Sarah Jessica Parker and show creators confirm that Kim Cattrall will not appear in a Sex in the City episode because of something she mentioned, like, to a fan. And I'm like, no, like, can everyone just get along? Like, everyone just get along for the right amount of money. Let's just I get know, the come on, on. <laughs> come on, like, come on. It's so dumb. It would be, inc- you, we so felt Samantha's absence. Like, it is a complete, mm-hmm. they're a completely different group of friends without her. They just are. They don't feel as close. They don't feel as close. There's not that someone that said, I mean, Miranda is very blunt, but Samantha is almost blunter in giving advice. But Samantha's you know? in, funny. In the fun, lighthearted. Yeah. Yeah, Samantha was exactly. funny in the three. Carrie is funny. She's like quick and clever. That's what I've always loved about Carrie, especially around men. I'm always like, oh, yes. she has the best lines around guys. But But Miranda and Charlotte aren't funny. And so you need, I think they need to make Seema funnier. 
<laughs> yeah, because she's not funny at no, all. No, but I love Seema. I'm obsessed with Seema. Seema's my like favorite new thing about the whole universe. Me too. Yeah. Me too. Me too. She's like lot, so cool and sexy. I know, but but I think if they made her funnier, then everyone would be like Samantha 2.0. If she and was I, like that sexy vixen like Samantha, she needs to be more like... She needs to deliver it funny. Because I've heard so many people be like, just give him head. Or like, yeah, just give him a blowjob. And it's not funny unless it's coming out of Samantha's mouth. Be like, darling, just give him head. And then that's yeah. funny. Exactly. You need yeah. that tone. You need, tone. Yeah. You need uh, that levity. Guys, like that. But I don't know if it can be Seema. It has to be someone new or Samantha, you know. I, I hope don't know. it's like I think rock. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you guys. Wait, you got rid of uh, this exact dress, Ashley? Yes. Oh, but you wouldn't have paired it with this shirt. <laughs> no, I would not have. I said she must have accessorized it better. Yeah, she... I would not have. But exactly. what's weird is, like, the value cool. of that dress is, like, $50. Mm-hmm. I got it for no more than $50. It must have been a knockoff of whatever designer it really is. <laughs> Maybe. Who knows? <laughs> Damn, you guys, I really wish you had Side it note, because I thought that Kim Cattrall was going to at least have a hit on her hands when I heard that she was in How I Met Your Father. But who saw How I Met Your Father and saw how horrendous it is? I, I haven't didn't seen it. I haven't seen it. I wanted to support it so because Hilary Duff and I think Leighton Meester are supposed to be in it. And I Blair Waldorf is very, very important. It's my whole personality. So I was like, I should watch the name. <laughs> but I haven't. I, I don't think I could. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, I don't even need to see it to know it's bad. Uh, Hillary Duff needs a lot of fucking help in the acting department. What? I could not disagree more. Okay. Lauren means in the awful. acting no, department. Younger, younger is like literally the best show Younger ever. was a good show, which kind of hid her poor acting. If you have a shitty show, it's going to highlight it. A Cinderella story, that uh, scene, I'll uh, never... And you know the scene. I can just say the scene from a Cinderella yeah. story, and you know exactly the scene because it is so it changed cinema for decades (laughs) (laughs) waiting for you it's like wait that her delivery i love i love hillary dub i don't think anyone can ever say anything bad about her i get no No, i think she's lovely and nice so likable i'm not hating on her her personally (laughs) um okay so what was the meaning of the downstairs neighbor like, what was our... Oh, my yes. gosh, Lauren. Great point. No idea. Obsessed with that. I think it was, like, Carrie... Well, wasn't that the same oh. facelift episode? Or was that the same? Yeah, wait, wait, wait. No, it was I'm young sorry. and old. I'm stupid. Totally a point to it. She was seeing her old self in yeah. that girl. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think it's, like, yeah. the cooler... And that actress was incredible, too. That was, very, that was like, one of the more beautiful. real grounded characters. Actually, yeah, now that you said that... Yeah, now that you said that... I look looking back at the scene where she goes down, she turns down the music and her and she uh, she sees her like passed down the couch and she blows out the candle for her. She's like taking care of her um, mm-hmm. to make sure she like doesn't burn the place down like that. No, after you said that, thinking about seeing that scene actually is very sweet to me. At first, I was kind of just like, OK, but <laughs> now that you said that, I do like that scene. That's really sweet. And it wasn't so much. We never really saw Carrie in her 20s, right? Um, but I think it was Carrie just appreciating the age that she's at now mm-hmm. and not wanting to be younger. Yeah, yeah. having like the mm-hmm. wisdom that she has now. Yeah, I love it. Um, I forgot that we haven't talked about Anthony or Willie Garson no longer being yeah. in the show. Yeah. Uh, Oscar, what are and- your thoughts on on the new Willie and Ant- or sorry, Stanny and Anthony that we saw? And how they sort of wrote his character. Their breakup? Yeah, yeah, Mm, yeah. their breakup and his death. How they handled it. Yeah. It's tough. Like, the breakup really... Because I I forgot, like, when this was filmed. Like, I don't know, the passing everything. Because the passing... His passing affected the... Did he die while they were filming the show? Is that... Okay, that's what I thought. Because I was like, it was so over, But I think he was probably supposed to be in a few more scenes and they had to cut certain scenes because it wouldn't have made sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they had to totally... Or else they would have showed us the breakup in real time rather than just him, Anthony, narrating. Yeah, that's because that really, like, took me out of it for a sec because it was, like, so abrupt. And granted, like, there was definitely, like, a foundation for it in, like, the first, um, especially, like, the funeral episode was, like... I mean, obviously, the first time they come back, they're already fighting, but then the funeral episode was, like, a big, like, whoa, like, this is... 
not like working out. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, the breakup, it was just like, it was so sudden, but at the same time, it's like, what can, it's, they're kind of like out of loss. Else. Yeah. There's you something can't kill really, another character. Yeah. But I do think they were at least like setting a foundation, like from the jump, like you, like, I did not like the relationship that I was seeing, like the second they were on screen together. I'm like, this mm. is like, it's not, it wasn't really fun to watch. Cause they, I don't, they just didn't have the, the way that they were bickering and stuff. It was, yeah it just felt like it was really realistic i think but it was like i like i wanted and just like that i was like i was ready for like the fashions the fun but it was like there was first like two episodes that were getting really dark mm-hmm. yeah why do they want to break everyone up though like why do they want to change everything like they broke up miranda and steve they killed off big they were going to have the two of them like divorce why did they want to ruin all the love that was found in the original series? I think they I think they had to have a like find purpose in bringing these characters back for a reason. Yeah. Like if they're going to come back, we need to see Carrie dating again. How do we do that? Mm-hmm. Big either has to cheat on her or we hate him or he dies and people still love him. You know, what's yeah. the point of seeing Miranda and Steve again grow old together? Like Miranda yeah. has to have some type of transformation what's charlotte gonna go through that's gonna like break her sort of like perfect porcelain doll exterior you know like her daughter is gonna not you know is gonna go through something that maybe she doesn't know how to handle like i think i get why they did everything i just don't like the quality some of the qualities that they added to the characters like miranda like you said in the beginning having never met a, a black woman with braids before at this point mm-hmm. in time in her life like mm-hmm. things like that didn't make yeah. sense to me i did think that anthony offered a lot of laughs i did think I anthony didn't. like it was in inha- oh really yeah. oh i thought anthony was like uh a comforting uh constant almost because he wasn't woke in in any way, which is very funny coming from him when, yeah. when like Rock was going through her, um, I don't know, discovery. Um, Anthony was like, oh, well, last week she was a poodle, you know? Yeah. And I was like, that's kind of refreshing to see kind of the exact opposite of every other character. Yeah, on he was show. most the most politically incorrect, yeah. which felt familiar. Yeah. Yeah. And even with like the objectification of men, <laughs> like he brought all that in. Right. Right. That's so true. Back. Having that back yeah. was like, okay, like this is still like the same show, you know? See, in the shallowness of wanting a, a face. Yeah. But for me, I like, I I thought his occupation was so bizarre. Like, <laughs> yeah. what, what yeah. was he in the old show? He was a stylist, right? Or was. Yeah. Like in the fashion industry, for sure. Like that would have been so much more interesting, I think, for me to see than him now starting a a hot guy bread business. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I don't they know. Should've... I was like, who thought of this in the writer's room? I don't know. It was like he could have been so much more grounded in reality. But I guess you're right. If he offered laughs to everyone and it worked, then then it worked, you know? Yeah. He yeah. took Samantha's spot a little bit, I feel yeah. like. Yeah. Yeah. With the swiping on for hot guys and mm-hmm. stuff. Yeah. Um, I know but the the writer's room podcast that you mentioned earlier, um, they recorded that right after like in the middle of writing it. But so before the episodes came out, so they ha- what they're saying, they have no idea how the fans took oh, it. Oh, so, I love that. Uh, yeah, so they're wow. just saying what we thought, but they didn't say, oh, they people didn't like this because, but they're just saying we did this because, and they don't know how we took it. So obviously they're going to take our criticism now, and if there is a season two, they're probably going to adjust some things. Yeah. Wow, mm-hmm. interesting. That's so yeah. I need to listen. What are your guys' thoughts on I know we want to see Steve again. I love Steve so much. I, I really love that greatest. moment with him and Carrie where he's like, I just need to know, and then he helps her. I love him. There was so much uh he got so much flack. Like they, they got a lot of flack for writing the character of Steve the way they did. I thought differently i actually thought that he seemed pretty true to himself throughout this maybe he stood up for himself a little less than he normally would have but i also feel like some men do that with age they just become a little bit more like lackadaisical yeah yeah i agree do 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 you guys feel like that was weird like he was weirdly written or did you feel like that is how you imagine steve to age i i I think that at first i was kind of like 
I did think that he was really written, but then I kind of thought about like my my dad. <laughs> I was like, because <laughs> what really like brought me was like um, with his hearing, and I was like, <laughs> and my dad is the exact same way. Like he just he just be checked out. He did not be listening. And um, <laughs> when it when it came to like the uh, towards the end when Miranda's asking like, do you really just want to like sit here on this couch and like or be fine with that? Like my dad, that that is what he wants to do. Like he just wants to like mm-hmm. be at home, like be yeah. sitting on the couch and he's like fine with it. And that mm-hmm. yeah. uh, he's like very like anti-conflict. He's just like coasting. So I was like, this makes sense for a man this age who's living his life. <laughs> but I feel like True. this is the life he would want. Right. Yeah. And like what he said, like, you know, you're you're always fighting for that moment. You're fighting for the coasting because when it's up and down, that's fucking stressful. So he's like, we made it. We made it to the coasting phase. And some people, that's good enough. And some people, it's not. And I thought that, you know, I, I don't know if I said it before, but I thought that Carrie was going to have like a, a heart to heart where she was like, totally. I wish that I could be eating ice cream with Big right now. So please, just, you know, eat that up. Totally thought there was going to be a full circle moment there because in movie number two, the whole thing is like, Big, why don't you want to go out? Why don't you want to do this? I want to explore. I want excitement. And then we start this this series off with her being content with making food at home every week, every day, every day. That's so true. Wow. Who was, there were, what else did I want to talk about? There's so much that we forget about. I know. I'm trying to think. But it is one show. You know, we talk so much shit about at the beginning. So much shit about during. But I, it is the only show this year besides Euphoria that I don't think about anything else while I'm watching it. And I am not on my phone. Wow. That says a lot. I know. It's so true. Yeah. It's such a fun world. I do hope we get to see more. And I love it now. Especially yeah. like At I, the end of the day... It's still us hanging out with our friends every Thursday. Right. Yeah. Even if they're a little different. Yeah. But they don't feel that much different. I also feel like they la- they laid so much foundation in this first season that I kind of feel like this will be a first season where fans are torn, but I think they can mm. really thrive now with everything that they laid down. Yeah. yeah. And so it's like, okay, time for the real show. Like, let's, let's get, get into going. this. And because now the podcast is starting, which we were thinking was going to happen the entire time. Just the updated column. Yeah. Now it's going to be the updated column. Yeah. It's going like, to be so go good. And she's going to be, well, she, maybe she'll be with Franklin. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, we'll see. Yeah, I think they got a lot of the stuff out of the way, especially for like the catching the show up to like the like to 2022. I feel like Mm -hmm. they they felt like they had to do so much, like Mm -hmm. almost like reparations for being like very like white um, and like very like heteronormative Mm -hmm. and like very stereotypical Mm -hmm. uh, when it was first on. And I thought they were like almost like having to like undo so much and they probably had a lot of that pressure. But now I feel like that everyone is like comfortable with it and like they want the show to kind of like push the boundaries a little bit more. I think that they can really like have fun with it again. I also think how incredible, first of all, I think Sarah Jessica Parker should have her own podcast. Yeah. And I also think like to have callers of people that are younger than Carrie that call in say. and be like, he didn't text me back. What do you think? Like, I am going to, that is. That is the only content I want in this world Absolutely. before I die. Mm-hmm. Before I die, that's what I want to see. And then we'll maybe we'll meet some of the callers. And I think um, in a perfect world, one of the callers will be Smith Jared. And he will come back into our oh lives. God, and we could have that eye candy on there. Oh, my God. That reminds me of one last thing we must discuss. And that was the absence of Aiden. Aiden. How he weird said because yeah. at the <laughs> At the beginning of the series being announced, Chris Noth was not signed on, and it seemed like John Corbett was, and oh. it was the opposite. I Now, you guys know that Lauren and I aren't huge Aiden fans, but it would have been interesting for him to have a cameo. I think Sarah actually just, I think she she responded to this like two days ago or something online where she thought it was funny. But he, but yeah, he basically lied and said he was going to be in the show, <laughs> yes. and then he like was not in the show. Oh, he cr- makes my skin crawl. I love him. I love him as dads in rom coms. Like always be my. No, 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 I like John Corbett. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. Like I don't. I think character made it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say always be my maybe, but I meant to say P.S. to all the boys I loved before. 
Yeah. Oh yeah, he was a dad in that. Yeah, him. but like, I don't want to see that man kissing anything for the rest of my life. <laughs> <laughs> Ew. <laughs> to think that we thought at the beginning of the series that like possibly she was going to end up back with him. I don't think that'll ever happen. Like, hey, way to be absolutely number so. two, Aiden. Do we, think, <laughs> do we think Burger would ever make a comeback? No. Maybe as like the smallest cameo to laugh at it. <laughs> um, whatever the post-it note equivalent would be yeah, these days. Yeah. I <laughs> thought she was going to say that when they were they were doing the podcast and they were like worst breakup ever and she goes my husband died i go no the post-it note (laughs) yes because that wasn't a breakup he died and the post-it note was way worse than whatever happened to the other guy and that would have been a fun tie into old episodes which we didn't really get a lot of allusions yes actually exactly like we want easter eggs just like when you watch like star wars or marvel like you want that tie-in of like the lore and the mythology like in it it's like you need to bring back post-it note you need to bring back the fact that you dated a guy named burger like yes. you need yeah. to bring all these things into the conversation. The only thing now. they did was bring the diaphragm back when she, when Samantha pulled out the diaphragm, right. and I like that. Yeah, but yeah. that was the only thing we really got. Did you guys know. see Gossip Girl, the new one? No, I've, I've, I've heard. heard. I, can't, I don't even want to try. No, like it's it's a mess. But I will say to his credit, it at least like bring obviously like Blake Lively is not gonna come back, but it does bring back like. Um, really older random characters like Blair's mom and it does have oh. like those it does reference like um Dana's Gossip Girl it does like have all these little references that at least mm. it's a good payoff even though it's a completely different show it's like it brings back the nostalgia and like the this like the world of Gossip Girl and I, I do wish they did a little bit more of that like to, the one thing Gossip Girl did right right and the to me the one thing I would love which I think they're going to be able to make not cringy through her podcast is I miss Carrie's voiceover yeah. Like, oh yeah and uptown miranda was hanging out you know <laughs> yeah. what i mean yeah. and i yeah. that to me just feels so familiar and i don't i know it's not going to be that on the nose but through the podcast maybe we'll hear her voice in some scenes that she's yeah. not yeah. she's not physically in you know hmm. and it is I, the op in the openings on do 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 oh my god doo-doo. i would love if right? they had done that but it's a completely different no but i thought i thought that they they do nod to that a little bit in the new song yeah. i thought they did a good job remixing it actually they used the movie version maybe i don't hear it maybe i skip through but it. i kind of like wanted them to do an intro they should have you know? a, they should have a show open like back in the day yeah, i know open. shows don't really have them anymore but the, this yeah. show no, needs it's one so cu- it's so great and yeah. nostalgic but and it gets you excited every single time yeah but the thing is that would be so hard to talk yeah yeah that's probably why they're True. like we're not even gonna bother damn you're probably right yeah they can't top it all right guys that theme song though i mean one uh, of the greatest of all time i know i want i want it to be my ringtone now can we have ringtones <laughs> on our iphone Let's bring I think you can. Yeah. Wait, how do I how do I download that because nancy oscar how do i download that i would have my phone on loud all the time I think you just have to like put a, a like airdrop or something to your phone and then you can select like in your settings. That's your cool. your ringtone. Okay. <laughs> Do you have that. any final thoughts, everyone, or we're just gonna wrap it no, up and we'll I see just, you next year when the next season comes out? Hopefully. I really loved it and I want more and I didn't like it in the beginning, but I'm very happy I like it now. Those are my final thoughts. Ditto. I wouldn't say I really loved it. I'd say that I like the trajectory that it's on. And yeah. I definitely want more. <laughs> That's exactly how I feel. It was a, a journey this season, but I'm excited for the future. Mm-hmm. And that's it. Right. And just and like just that. Like just that. like <laughs> that. <laughs> like, wait, we have to say it at the same time. One, two, okay. three. And, and just, just like, like that. that. <laughs> <laughs> no. all, all the same time. <laughs> all right. Love you guys. Subscribe. Bye. 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 If you want to be the most interesting person at the cocktail party, well, hop on over and listen to the Brain Candy Podcast. Our award-winning content will have you laughing while you're learning. We read all the best articles, books, and studies, and keep up with new TV shows, documentaries, and pop culture. And then we cram it all into two shows a week. Conspiracy theories, cannibal rabbits, unsolved mysteries, the history of the Walkman. There's something for everyone. The Brain Candy Podcast. Find our link in the show notes. Or simply search for the Brain Candy Podcast on your podcast app. I don't get it. Podcast.